welcome to Trident Astrology. I'm Janine Kane. Okay, today I'm going to be going over the September weekly forecast for the weeks between the 14th through the 20th. Now before I begin, I want to apologize if there is any background noise um, because I, where I'm living, um, I'm around some surrounding um, wildfires that um, is causing an immense amount of smoke uh, in the environment. And if I don't keep my air purifier on, my home smells like smoke. So I do apologize for the noise in the background. We have some very intense times uh, going on right now for 2020, and this week is no exception. So let's get to it. Um, Last week, we had Mars going retrograde and Jupiter going direct. We do not have any planets uh, shifting uh, directions this week. We do have Saturn going direct on the 29th. Right now, this week, we do not have any um, outer or inner planet ingressions. Everything is in that way is staying fairly stable. Mercury will not be changing signs until the end of the month, and Venus won't be changing uh, signs until the beginning of October. The Sun will enter into Libra on the 22nd, marking our equinox. Last week we were in a quarter moon phase, and this week we are having a very, very intense new moon in Virgo. <clears throat> we don't have any eclipses until the no November 30th and December 14th, and I will be going over some very, very, very intense um, and multi-complex aspects this week associated with the new moon. So sneak peek of the week before I go into the interpretation. Monday the 14th, we have Sun trine Pluto going exact. We have um, the Sun also trining Saturn and Jupiter, but the Sun-Saturn trine will go exact on th Thursday the 17th during the new moon, or the same day as the new moon, I should say. We have Sun squaring the north and south nodes, and Neptune squaring the north and south nodes with the Sun and Neptune in opposition, creating a grand mutable cross that is going to follow us to the new supermoon in Virgo and through until the end of the month, ending September 24th. And this is a huge energy, huge energy. Um, Venus is conjunct with Moon, trining Chiron and squaring Uranus. And the Venus square Uranus will be going exact on Tuesday. Thursday the 7th, 17th, we have the new super moon, a perigean moon in Virgo, which encompasses the grand mutable cross and the sun moon conjunction, uh, excuse me, the sun and moon in conjunct or quincunx, Mars and Eris. And we have the sun moon trine going exact that day. We're going to talk about the Mercury square Jupiter and the Mercury quincunx Neptune energy that day. So we have a Jan packed uh, energy happening on the 17th, the new moon. On Saturday, we will be dealing with two T-square energies between the moon, Mars, Saturn, and Pluto, and the T-square between Mercury, Mars, Saturn, and Pluto, with Mercury, Pluto square going exact on Sunday. Okay, let's, let's get into it. So there are very significant and many varied energetic aspects this week. So please bear with me as I navigate the vast amount of information I would like to provide you. I hope that my interpretation does the divine message justice. I humble myself as I attempt to communicate the important and heavy messages for us this week as written in the skies. First, I will identify the patterns and then I will go into the interpretation. I'm doing this to attempt to organize the multi-complex information. Uh, we do have quite a bit to get through this week, so again, please bear with me. 
Okay, so what I'm looking at on Monday the 14th is the Sun trining Jupiter. Here's the Sun, and it's trining Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn. And as we can see here, the Pluto Sun trine is exact at 22 degrees of the Earth signs, Virgo and Capricorn. On Thursday the 17th, the Sun will be an exact trine to Saturn at 25 degrees, the same day of the new supermoon in Virgo. So the moon will join in on the, the energetic of the new moon and the encompassing grand mutable cross energy. We're also looking at the sun squaring the south and the north nodes. This square began on September 8th and will end September 23rd, 24th. This is very, very significant uh, energy as the sun is illuminating the collective destiny. That is what the north and the south nodes represent. They are known as the nodes of fate. They symbolize the collective spiritual path and show us what we need to let go of collectively and what we need to learn. Okay. Now I'm not going to go into deep detail here about the astronomy, but I do want to state very succinctly that the nodes of the moon right here are two points where the moon's orbit and the ecliptic intersect. So they are points in space. They are not objects. In other words, the lunar nodes are two points of intersection where the moon crosses the Earth's ecliptic during its orbit around the Earth. And I will be writing extensively on this later and creating a video course on this. Also very succinctly, the lunar nodes play a specific role in whether or not we have an eclipse. A lunar or solar eclipse occurs when the orbit of the moon crosses the ecliptic on a full or new moon within 12 to 18 degrees. In astrology, the closeness of the luminaries, the sun and the, and the moon, uh, to the lunar nodes here, determine the power of the eclipse. Now, we're certainly not having a lunar eclipse on this new moon on Thursdays, as we can see the luminaries here, um, and the moon will be approaching here, the sun um, on the 17th will be conjunct, it's a new moon, um, and as we can see here, they are not in close proximity to the nodes, which needs to be more than 18, no more than 18 degrees apart, and they are much more than that, and that's why we're not having an eclipse. But that's just a little bit about that. And let me fix this here. I'm going to bring that down. Okay. Moving on from that. Very important, as we can see, the sun remains in, in opposition to Neptune here, which was exact last week on the 11th. This annual event is significant this week because Neptune is also in square to the north and south nodes, which began on September 3rd and will last all the way through to mid-March 2021. So Neptune square that began on the 3rd with these the north and south node will, will continue all the way through to March 2021 and it will get intense and more tightened in January of 2021. So I'm going to take off real quick the single planetary aspects to show you the significant configuration formed here by the Sun and Neptune opposition and the North and South nodes opposition, which um, I'm going to digress, which are always in opposition. The north and south nodes are always in opposition to each other for reasons that I'll discuss more thoroughly in another video. But I will go into it just a little bit. The ecliptic is the trace of the sun's path across the earth as the earth orbits the sun. So here's the sun 
and here's the earth and the earth is orbiting around the sun and the sun is tracing its path across the earth and that's called the ecliptic and as the moon orbits around the earth it intersects in in at these points of the ecliptic and this the 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 south node here is the descending node. That's this point right here where it crosses, intersects with the ecliptic. As it ascends, that's the north node here. So here is these two points. These are points in space and time as, it, as the moon crosses an imaginary line, the intersection of the ecliptic here. So this is the, uh, excuse me, this is the south node and here is the north north node and that's why they are in opposition always okay enough of that so what we have here oh yes i was going to uh, bring it up out of the single planet aspect so you can see now i know it's difficult to see with all the other aspects i'll do my best but what is for what forms here is a very rare configuration called the grand cross this grand cross is mutable grand cross because each of the planets and the nodes involved are immutable signs the sun is in virgo which is mutable the south node is in sagittarius which is mutable the neptune is in pisces which is mutable and the north node is in gemini which is mutable A grand cross is formed when two sets of opposites form squares between the planets. We have the Sun opposing Neptune and the South Node opposing uh, the North Node, and they're creating a square. So you can see here, excuse me, you can see here that the North Node squares the Sun, the Sun is squaring the South Node, the South Node is squaring Neptune. Neptune is squaring the North Node, and then these are forming oppositions, and that's and it forms a configuration that looks like this. I apologize, I can't, I, I'm not pulling it up here to show you in this chart, but you get the idea here. This mutable Grand Cross will stay intact through to the end of the month until September 23rd and 24th, when the Sun ends its square with the lunar nodes. This mutable grand cross is very, very significant energy in the upcoming new supermoon in Virgo. Okay, going back to single planet mode here. All right. And we're going to be moving also on to the interpreta interpretation part of this. So we have the sun, pardon me, the sun squaring the, the nodes here, trining Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn, and it's opposing Neptune. We also have the sun, quincunx, Mars, and Eris here that are in, in conjunction, which I will go over at the new supermoon in Virgo section. The sun represents our sense of self in the world, our identity. The south and north nodes represent our collective destiny. The outer planets here, Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn, have created immense amount of expansion, Jupiter, change and transformation, Pluto, and constriction, Saturn, in our world, to say the least. With the world around us, around us in a drastic state of change, Pluto, Jupiter, and Saturn, we are in a constant need to adapt in a subtle and a deep psychological way, Pluto, the world changes us, and in some way we change the world. We cause that change. Here is a suitable union uh, quote that I believe 
to some extent, does this energetic configuration justice? So the self, the self here, the self is a part of the collective unconscious. See, the outer planets here, including Neptune, which is a part of this dynamic, represent the unconscious. So I thought this, this quote would be fitting. So no, uh, so, so the self is part of the collective unconscious, but it is not the collective unconscious. It is that unit which apparently comes from the union of the ego, here's the sun, the ego, and the shadow, Pluto. So that's kind of the energy happening here with this configuration that you see. Change is an inevitable part, inevitable part of life experience. Change can be very painful, especially when we have to face the horrific and unpredictable events. Jung stated that there is no growth of consciousness individually, here we are, this individually or collectively, without pain, Pluto. For many of us, we are in a painful process of letting go. The devastating fires, um, the COVID-19, um, and all this, the social unrest. Collectively, we are experiencing immense amount of loss. That's the North Nodes here. The South and North Nodes remind us that no man is an island. We are taking a collective journey into the shadow toward growth together. And that's what this grand mutable cross symbolizes. So the outer planets, Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn in conjunction here, not in exact con conjunction, though they have been throughout the year, have expanded us, Jupiter, have created painful changes and transformation, Pluto, has, has constricted us, Saturn, example, the lockdowns. But we are learning from this. We are learning from this and becoming stronger individually and collectively. And I believe it is, do pardon me, let me close that, I apologize. And I believe it is, it has caused us to expand spiritually. And that's the sun opposing Neptune here because Neptune represents spiritual growth and it's impacting us individually and collectively through what is happening in the world. Here, I think, is another suitable uh, quote. There is no coming to consciousness without pain. People will do anything, no matter how absurd, to avoid facing their own soul. One does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by making darkness conscious. And I think that's certainly a large part of what's going on here. And we are most certainly doing that as the darkness of life experience, whether we like it or not, or whether or not we are ready for it or not, makes its way to our consciousness as we face crisis and chaos. Pluto symbolizes here the phoenix, the rising from the ashes after being transformed by the mutable flames. And this sun trying the Pluto here, exact at 22 degrees, is in each of us as we face the dark days. Now we're moving into the Venus conjunct the moon whilst trining Chiron and squaring Uranus. So let me pull that up for us. Now the Venus squaring Uranus is going to go exact on Tuesday the 15th. Venus represents our values, resources, money, and relationships which are squaring Uranus. This can bring in unpredictable changes to these areas. Uranus brings in a shifty energy. And with the emotions of the moon here involved, we may find our emotions 
erupting out of us and changing swiftly. We may find ourselves dealing with very deep emotional wounds, and that's Chiron here. It's the wounded healer. It's helping us to face our inner wounds. And so that is the energy that starts us off this week on Monday. Okay, moving on to September 17th, Thursday, where we are going into our new super moon, the Perigean moon in Virgo. Let me pull up that chart for us. So at 4 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, our new super moon, also known as the Perigean moon, at 25 degrees of Virgo, here we are, it's at 25 degrees, the moon and the sun are conjunct at 25 degrees of Virgo. A super moon occurs when the moon is nearest to the earth. It's in perigee. A perigean moon occurs about three to four times a year. We have two more new super moons this year, which will occur on October 16th and November 15th. So when the moon is in perigee, its effects are felt even more intensely. And besides the fact that we have a rare configuration, the grand mutable trine, or excuse me, the grand mutable cross, this new moon is going to be really, really powerful because it's in perigee. So we're getting double whammied here. It's, it's a very, very, very strong configuration, especially with the moon in perigee. Again, um, I know it's bar barely noticeable, but Neptune, uh, the North Node, the Luminaries, and the South Node are in square, and the ne Neptune now is in opposition to both the luminaries, and both the luminaries are now squaring the north and south nodes, where the moon is now joining in with the mutable grand cross here. Um, and the mutable grand cross will remain until the end of the month. So let me put this back into single planetary aspects. All right, so the luminaries, the sun and the moon, are exact trine to Saturn here at 25 degrees. So some of us may really feel the moon here and experience the sun in limitations and constraints. That's the Saturn influence here being imposed on us. There will be some real challenges ahead that will require an immense amount of effort, strength, and fortitude. And that's the Saturn energy there as we are entering into very new beginnings, to say the least. Um, we can use the Saturn energy here uh, to strengthen our will and to build our fortitude um, during these times. So new moons are about letting go and they're about new beginnings. So we are being phoenixed. Here's the, we're being phoenixed into a massive spiritual growth. This is the Neptune opposing the moon and sun here. And we are being phoenixed into a letting go process, especially collectively. This new moon is exceptionally more powerful in that message with the configurations involved and the new moon being in perigee. The luminaries are directing our attention. They are directing our attention to the certain planets and to the north and south nodes. In particular, the luminaries are highlighting the Neptune squaring the north and south nodes, the lunar nodes, which 
has a very significant and powerful message for us collectively. This Neptune square to the lunar nodes will last until March 2021 and it will build in intensity and strength in January 2021. <laughs> I'm stuck in 2011. <laughs> um, better days maybe. <laughs> um, first, let's talk about the mutability of the Grand, gr grand Cross here and what it means. Um, a Grand Cross is formed by two opposites and four squares. With the combination, um, there is very intense growth-oriented energy here. It's extreme uh, attention for growth and change. It can be very heavy energy to bear. With the mutability, there is even more emphasis on change or the need for adaptation in order to get through the challenging times ahead. If we can, we have to, we have the potential to grow very deeply through this. So this is a very challenging configuration of energy moving us forward into 2021, but it is deeply, deeply growth oriented. Now mutable comes from the Latin root mutabilis, meaning change. And with the mutable grand cross, it's a message that a massive change is going to happen. With the lunar nodes involved, we are collectively need to adapt. We have to be flexible. We have to uh, adjust to the rapid changing, uh, changes happening to us. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the spiritual big whammy, the Neptune squaring the north and the south nodes. So let me pull that up. Oops. Okay, what we see here is that Neptune is the, the influ influential planet here. It is in its home constellation of Pisces, where it will stay until 2025. Quoting from my mentor Kelly Lee Phipps, Neptune is a magnetic feminine archetype. It is the infinite water mother. It symbolizes spiritual growth, transcendence, and compassion. And it's lightning focused on our collective path, the lunar nodes here. The lunar nodes are currently in the constellation of Gemini and the north node here, and in Sagittarius, the south node. A tad bit of astronomy again, I hope this doesn't kill you, but the orbital plane of the moon processes in space. So it's going backward. The orbital plane of the moon uh, processes in, in space. As such, the lunar nodes also process around the ecliptic, completing an orbit in 18.6 years. This is called the nodal period. So what I'm trying to get to is that the lunar nodes process through the constellations. And for example, they were recently uh, in the constellations of Cancer and Capricorn. Um, they, as of May 5th, 2020, they shifted into 29 degrees of Gemini and Sagittarius. So now they're in 24 degrees of those signs. They are moving backward through the signs. So the, the north node, instead of going Cancer, Leo, Virgo, it's going Cancer, Gemini, and Taurus. It's going, it's presenting. So that's, that's really important to understand. Um, the south node in Sagittarius is the collective past. And the north node in Gemini is the collective future, where we're going. As I've explained before, everything exists in a dualistic unity. And this is the idea that everything exists with an opposite polarity for which the interactions form 
in axial interactivity, it interpolates and connects to learn from each other, seeking harmony and equilibrium in the process of integration and wholeness. So that's what this energy is doing here. It's trying to collectively help us integrate and become more whole. The energetic direction we're growing toward moves from Sagittarius archetypes to Gemini archetypes. So our collective perceptions and our, so our collective perceptions and philosophy of reality are growing toward greater levels of wisdom and respect for one another. That's the potential of this energy. So the Gemini Sagittarius axis is named by Kelly Lee Phipps, the axis of insight. And this is being, the axis of insight is being targeted here by Neptune in a square. Gemini represents neighbors, social environment, relatives, communication, education, the expression of ideas, and spiritual awareness. Sagittarius symbolizes personal beliefs, principles, faith, seeking a higher identity, uh, destiny. And so this is where we're trying to go. We're trying to integrate these archetypes. And this is going to be going on here for about 18 and a half months, whilst the lunar nodes are in Gemini and Sagittarius. <clears throat> now, the dark side of Neptune's influence on the lunar nodes is the tendency that to have for the tendency uh, toward escapism, whether it's media, social media, drugs, alcohol, sex, relationships. Things are difficult right now, and it sometimes seems easier to escape the growing pains. And it's easy to get ourselves into patterns of behavior where we are automatically escaping when things get bad or when we get triggered. But if we do that, we lose out on the growth opportunity. Also, Neptune can influence idealization and disillusionment. We may idealize a person or an idea or a social construct as perfect or the perfect solution to our problems and then later discover that the person, idea, or social construct is no good as one believed it was going to be. So we could collectively split, as it's called in psychology. That is a darker potential of this Neptune energy. And this energy, the spiritual big whammy, is going on until March 2021. So we have to use the, we should use the, the energies right now uh, toward growth rather than the darker shadow side of escapism. I know that's not easy. That's easier said than done. Most things worth it um, are. They're, it's, it's easier said than done. Okay. So also during the this new supermoon in Virgo, the luminaries are going to be quincunx to Mars and Eris. So let me pull that up. Okay. Here the sun and the moon are quincunx, Mars and Eris, which are also conjunct. A quincunx is when planets are 150 degrees apart or five signs away. So one, two, three, four, five. So we, these, are, these planets are separated by 150 degrees. And this makes sense since each sign makes up 30 degrees times five signs equals 150 degrees. So the energy can create confusion uh, between the planets. The planets involved can't really hear each other. The energy is challenging. Um, we feel that something is wrong. Uh, we want to fix it and we want to figure it out, but we can't. So that's the energy here when we have a quincunx. 
The extreme growth energy formed by the mutable Grand Cross and its message of transcendence is most certainly tied to the fires pervading the California and the Pacific Northwest. I know this because Mars and Eris that are, in, that are conjunct play a significant role in the fires as well as the Mars retrograde. The lumini, luminaries right here are lightning focused on these two planets. On August 17th, when many of the fires started, the Mars-Eris conjunction was exact. Also, there was a grand fire trine between some planets during those days before and after the fires. On August 17th, Mars was 0.56 astronomical units away from Earth. This proximity of Mars to Earth is extremely close. And as I have learned from the Sky Astrology Conference community, the Earth's proximity is cr critical in understanding Mars retrogrades. Because during retrograde, the fiery energy of Mars is intensified due to its proximity to the Earth, which gets closer. Okay, so when we look at this graph here, this graph represents the distance between Mars and Earth over the course of, of time as it retrogrades and goes direct. This chart is for August 18th, and it shows that on, on this date, Mars was at 0.56 astronomical units in uh, distance away from the Earth, which is, an in is intensely close to the Earth. And so when Mars is going retrograde, it gets closer to the Earth. And as we can see, looking at this chart as well, is that in the next couple months, during this Mars retrograde in September, October, November, Mars is actually going to even get closer to the Earth. And so in the next couple months, the, archetype, the archetypal energy of Mars is going to intensify. And Mars represents fire. It, re it represents aggression, assertion, will. So this is going to be very powerful in the next couple months. Now, there are many um, significant synchronicities um, between astrology and the fires, and I'm going to create a video about that later. Going back to the, uh, the new moon here, so with the Pluto trining here to the sun and the moon, we have the symbol of this phoenix energy that is, that is propelling us to cope with reality, to keep attention to the moment, embrace the unknown, to evolve our emotions. See, Virgo exists on the axis of spirit, and as such, our souls are in a transcendental trajectory with everything that is happening and all the social and cultural changes happening. Finally, in this chart, I want to look at the Mercury square Jupiter here. Let's pull up the chart. So here we see Mercury in exact square to Jupiter at 17 degrees. I also want to take note of the Mercury quincunx Neptune here which will be exact on Friday, the 18th. With Mercury squaring Jupiter, we are challenged to maintain a hopeful perspective. However, Jupiter reminds us that we do heal and that we, we will rebuild, like the phoenix rising out of the ashes. Mercury quincunx Neptune here brings in a very mentally foggy energy. And with everything going on, um, in many areas there is poor air quality, there is tensions in society, 
so many people right now are experiencing intense loss. And this is causing a mental exhaustion. So with Virgo, um, with a emphasis, with, or with the sun and moon emphasis, sorry, excuse me, I'm getting tired here. With the sun and moon in conjunction in Virgo, we are reminded of the importance to take care of ourselves at this time. And most importantly, to have compassion for ourselves. Okay, moving on. Trekking through here. <laughs> on September 19th, Saturday, we're going to experience two T-squares between the Moon, Mars, Saturn, and Pluto and Mercury, Mars, Saturn, and Pluto. And Mercury, Pluto square will be going exact on Sunday ending our week. So let me pull up those charts to pardon me. Now we are looking at a T-square configuration and this is happening on the 19th and the 20th. There is a T-square here between the Moon, Mars and Eris, Saturn and Pluto. And there's a T-square here between Mercury, Mars and Eris, and Pluto and Saturn with the Pluto and Sat, uh, excuse me, the Pluto Mercury square going exact on Sunday. So another atten attention for growth configuration here, which I believe can ignite our will to survive even with all that is happening in the world right now. So again, T squares are formed with two planets in opposition with one another, squaring another planet, or planets in our case, Pluto and Saturn here, which become the focal planets. Here the focal planets, Pluto and Saturn, sim symbolize transcendence and fortitude and persistence even when things are difficult. So when things get difficult, we rise up and we find the will to survive. On Sunday, let's take a look at this chart here. Pluto, pardon me, Pluto and Mercury are exact at 22 degrees and we can see here that this T-square is more differentiated. So the tension for growth configuration becomes stronger by the end of the week. So we're ending the week with the, this an intense growth energy. This whole week has been about coping with crisis, integrating wounds, and tapping into our will to survive and not letting go of hope for the future. The energetic configuration of this week completely supports our healing and growth both collectively and individually. And it is powerful because it is moving us through the year on into the year 2021. Future highlights that I'll be um, looking at um, in our my upcoming September weekly forecast. The 22nd is our autumnal equinox. The 23rd we have a second quarter moon phase with Mercury Saturn square and Venus Neptune quincunx. On the 24th, we have Mercury-Mars opposition. 26th, we have the Venus-Pluto quincunx. 27th, we have Mercury entering Scorpio. On the 28th, we have Saturn going direct and the Venus-Mars trine. And then on the 29th, we have the Mars-Saturn square, which also happened exact on August 24th. I want to thank you so much for joining me. And I would hope that you would join me next week for another Trident Astrology Weekly Forecast. Before I go, I want to send out my deep love and prayers for all those people that have been impacted by the California and the, Nor the Pacific Northwest fires. I, I'm sending out my deepest prayers.
I'm so sorry for all that everyone is going through. With that being said, I want to send my blessings and love to everyone. Thank you for joining me.